Welcome back, man. Episode five, All the Smoke. My brother Jack. Stack five. Steven. You dig? Jesse Jackson. Mm -hmm. All that. And my man Sweet Lou. What's that? Man, appreciate you coming. Little bro in the building, give me some. On an off day. On an off day, you dig? So you're 15, huh? Yeah, man. 15 years. I'm getting up there. Straight out of high school. Yeah. I was with you. That was your rookie year. I was with you, right? Yeah, we was in Philly. We yeah. Was Neither of us was playing, <laughs> chilling, both on the what bench. What was that like? It was different for me because yeah. I was just happy to be there. Yeah, yeah. He was like, what the fuck is going on? I like, still was watching Chuck, the though. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was, we had front row seats to, you know what I mean, to, to the greatest show on, on the court for a minute. <laughs> mm -hmm. Tell me what it was like coming straight out of high school. I'm sure you looked up to AI and then playing with him and having him as a mentor fresh out of high school. Yeah, for me, it was it was mind blowing because I spent like uh, my whole high school career like modeling my game after this dude. Like he's literally the reason why I even started getting tattoos and he was so influ influential in my life and I didn't even know this cat, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? He was just a like a role model to me that I didn't even know and then go into the league and it's like, oh shit, that's my teammate now. And then it set in like, well, is he gonna like me? Like, you know what I'm saying? And the first time we ever met, um, it was at Charlie Mack um, celebrity game in the summer. And uh, he you was came. already you was already drafted by then. I got drafted, uh -huh. and then invited me to come play in the game. So I go up to Philly, and then it's just like this wave of people come in. You know, he keep his entourage. Yeah, <laughs> hundred people come in. It's Rock like star. commotion. Everybody going crazy, and I see him, and I just kind of freeze. And out of all the people in the building, this dude locked eyes with me and like walked directly to me and gave me a bear hug. And yeah. that's been my big brother ever Ooh. since. Man. That's what's That's up. a great feeling, huh? I know it was. Yeah, man. Just, it's like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because, like, all right, at least he embraced me enough to, you know, at least speak to me. To get know? acknowledged by people you look up to, that's all, That's always that's a great feeling. For sure. Because yeah, yeah. I've had people let me down that I look up to. Yeah, yeah. yeah Real so. talk. Real talk. So what, what was some of the stuff that you learned early on because, you know, you were a student before you actually got out there and got to do it. What is some of the stuff you learned from him by just watching him every day from practice to he games? He laid it on the line every day. You know, just, you know, it's well documented how much, how many injuries that he played through, um, all the pain that he played through, broken, broken bones mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's unfortunate that it, you know, it always be remembered about the practice thing. But it's like shit. He couldn't practice. Right. You know, he was so banged up. If he couldn't. Knew. Well, you know? wanted on the game, or you wanted in practice. Exactly. Which one you want? You know. But he just he laid it on the line for his teammates every single time yeah. he went out there. They don't understand. Like, remember them big ass elbow bursts sacks? He used yeah. to have like tennis balls on his elbows every day, man. Just and it's funny that, like, now because like it's gonna you gonna be hard pressed to find a superstar that practice these days anyway. Anyway, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he was just ahead of his time. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> Going into the season. You like to kind of, I mean, you stay in Atlanta. You, you guys do that whole pro-am, and, and you're real big on kind of working out and, and, and getting ready. What is that like for you year in, year out, seeing that, you know, where you started and where you came from? I need to change the pro-am name, though. That's got to be what? your pro-am. Lou Will pro-am. I mean, yeah. to me, I compare it to, like, Jamal Crawford. That's, like, his yeah. I've seen it with my own eyes. Yeah. I played with him. I, yeah. I mean, I see it on IG. Yeah, he time, get 50 so. on one leg if he walks to an yeah. in the league. We'll keep you humble, but, you know. We had to put some work in. You know, Stack come play with me. He part of the crew. So, uh, but it's cool, man. It's an opportunity. Uh, we play down on the west side of Atlanta. It's an opportunity for young kids that that probably don't make it to Phillips Arena to see games and, mm -hmm. and don't get to see pros. So to bring guys in town, um, they were able to see prime Kyrie Irving yeah. in their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. yep. You know where you can walk in the gym and he in there putting on the show. You know mm -hmm. you get to see that. You get to see a lot of different guys that come through that gym and so. Uh, for me to be a part of it, um, be a pillar of it, it's cool. Um, how do you find out about PG and Kawhi was signing? Like me, I, I think I kind of knew, you know, from talking to Kawhi a couple of days before, but how did you find out? I didn't know shit, to be honest with you. <laughs> 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 they reached out to me, management reached out and said, hey, um, we're going to meet with Kawhi. Um, here's his number if you want to say something to him. And I was thinking Help to myself, like... I'm going to leave this dude alone because... <laughs> you know what's coming at him. Yeah, I'm like, I I, I don't think I'm going to sway his his decision either way. You know what I mean? And so I text him and I just said, what's up, killer? This is Lou Will. I know you're about to have your meeting. You got any questions about the coaches or anything, just hit me. Keeping it 1,000 as possible. And I left it and I left it there. He said, bet I'm going to go into the meeting and I'll call you after. He never called me. It was like three, four days went by. I was like, 
Yeah, I think I blew it. Yeah, I was like, you know, because we had never actually met. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, damn. I hope that wasn't part of it. And then um I was in Vegas in the summer league. And it's funny, I had just seen PG like 10 minutes before. I seen him. He was uh he was playing uh craps. He was shooting craps. I was playing roulette. And we uh we spoke, he kept moving, and then we were playing, and then it was just like a buzz in the um in the casino. And my man came up and tapped me while I was while I was making my bets. He showed me his phone. So it was like Kawhi Leonard agrees to play with the Clippers and the Clippers trade for Paul George. So I'm looking at it like the fuck? And so I'm like, man, go to Woj page. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> I don't believe it until I see it on Woj page. Yeah. So we seen it on Woj page and my phone started ringing and it was Pat Bev. And Pat was in uh, Vegas with me. Mm-hmm. So he was like, yo. I was like, man, come downstairs. I'm, I'm at the roulette table, come downstairs. So it was cool. And I saw that post y'all made. Yeah, that's, we, was in a <laughs> casino. That we was in a casino tripping out. Yeah. We, had, we had a shot and then we kept gambling. Like, well, it's exciting to have them, but we'll start dealing with that in training camp. Yeah, yeah. that's what's up. Tell me what that, cult, that whole culture is like. Uh, I played there early. Um, you know, I played at the end of the, um, what's the, what's the dickhead's name? Sterling. Oh, the, uh, yeah, the end of the Sterling era. Yeah, okay. You said, um, that, was, that, that was right. You said yeah, dickhead. Not, uh, that was yeah, right. That's right. official. Yeah. End of the, uh, the Sterling era and then into the bomber era. And it was, it was night and day. Yeah. Tell me what the organization is like now and the, and the energy around it. My experience has been so positive. Um, just how I've been embraced by the city and the organization. You know, I was at a crossroads in my career. Um, I didn't even want to be a Clipper. You know, I, that was the third team I had played for in six months. And so at that point, I just didn't know what was happening. You know what I'm saying? I, I, that was my first time kind of going through something like that in my career. And so I just wasn't excited about getting bounced around. Um, and I think Doc had sensed that. And, um, you know, me and Doc, have, have, we had a conversation. Um, and he just changed my perspective about being there. And so I went into training camp with an open mind. Um, and I went in with some guys that was on the same page as me. You know, Pat Bear, he's hungry to prove himself, hungry to prove his name, make his name in the NBA. Montrez was starting to come into his own. He wanted to prove his name. We had young guys coming in that wanted to be a part of the culture, wanted to be, wanted to be accepted. And so I think we had like minds um, in going into the season. And even though, um, you know, it didn't work out with Blake and Dre while they were there, you know, the experience was positive. And so we just kept that momentum going. Um, we communicate. We got problems. We got we got grown men in our locker room. Uh, we don't do no rookie hazing. Uh, we like we, you know, for me being a vet, me being an OG, and just looking back at, you know, how the league was carrying it. I I prefer to just grow them up, like men. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, look, y'all do y'all job. Y'all do everything y'all supposed to do. We ain't gonna do all the hazing shit. We not gonna play them games with y'all. We want y'all to look like men. You was brought so, up in a different time too. I was brought up with AI. He ain't mm-hmm. really play like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Opposed to him pouring water on my head. Other than that, I ain't wearing no pink backpacks. Yeah, and all none that. of that. We had that you know, one incident on the bus the one time. Oh yeah, that was, <laughs> but see, even then, that's a, that's a whole different <laughs> but thing. But that was I, grown shit though. Yeah, I let Matt tell that one. You know, but I got paid though. I you, got want me, paid. you want me? You want me to tell it? Whatever. It's so that so well, that that was we was heading somewhere. I don't even know where we was. I heading. don't even remember. We I know we was on the West Coast though. But we made a bet that he had to drink a six pack. I, I I didn't drink at the time. He didn't drink. He, he was fresh out of high school. I was a kid. Stayed right. to himself. Right. Quiet. You still look like a kid. Yeah, yeah he still looked the same. <laughs> uh, we met, how much money you get? Fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand dollars. Man, give me a forty of this. Give me a six pack of forties. Yeah, give said, me a six pack yeah. of alcohol. But he couldn't drink a six pack in on the bus ride. Right? It was quick said, though. It was they a said quick drive. I couldn't drink a six pack of beer before we got on the plane for fifteen grand. Shit. I damn the that bitch. motherfucker <laughs> killed it. Yeah, <laughs> hey, but he was so wet that it, we almost got like a little worried. Like, damn, what the fuck? How are we gonna carry Lou? You know what I mean? So we kind of he kind of had his arm slumped on AI's shoulder, <laughs> and then me and C Webb was kind of in front, kind of just like. Uh, oh, he was out of there. He was I still there, drank. but he was. Fu- never, you know what I mean? I like he wasn't. Drink, he ha- he handled himself well, but he was fucked up. You know I mean, yeah. so we kind of had to like <laughs> camouflage his ass up onto the plane, but that was kind of like, the, from what I, I recall, paid. the only time, yeah, because he got big bread off it, you know what I mean? But I, I think paid. that was the only kind of time we ever did any kind of rookie shit. We wasn't really, it was like you said, it was more on some grown man shit, right. like handle your business, work out, you're not playing, do what you're supposed to do. But shit, shit, but shit like that, that's that's more of a, 
Of the way, that's uh, we fuck with you. Welcome. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Because there was a lot of rookies on that team, and they and weren't yeah. fucking with them at all. Yeah, exactly, you know exactly. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> tell me what it's like now. Last year, I loved the fact that you guys bought in. You guys, you guys were one of my favorite teams last year. I really take pride in the Clippers because, like you, I got a chance to play for the Lakers and Clippers. And that's a whole nother world. We'll get to that. But I took pride in trying to put the Clippers on the map. Right. And it seems like once you guys bought in. That's where you guys are at. So, so tell me what, what what's that like knowing that the Clippers have always been the little brother. You've been on the other end, but tell me what it's like taking pride in putting them we on the map. It. Our mindsets are perfect for it. Our personalities, we perfect for it. We like being the underdog. Y'all get hit us with these the sixteen rings and all that. It's like it's cool, but we working on ours though. Right. Mm-hmm. We working on one that we gonna be a, be a part of, you know. And, and we carry that, and we embrace it, you know. Even though last year we wasn't even expected to make the playoffs, we were a fifty win team. Uh, with no quote-unquote superstar. Right. Mm-hmm. But like you said, we bought in. We trusted each other. We loved each other. We loved competing with each other. Team and full of dogs. We yeah, had a team full of that. dogs. And then you bring in them two guys, and it's like you still got the same core guys, same group of guys with that mindset, and you bring in two of the top five players in the league, you know, the sky's the limit. And so. they, they have that. That's what I loved about it. That's why I picked you guys from the jump to win the champ, because they don't have no egos, no agendas. Them motherfuckers go out there and play hard on both ends. Right. That's why I thought they fit. Because to me, it was a tricky situation fucking up your guys' chemistry. People on the outside don't under, understand how important chemistry, chemistry is. is. So bringing yeah. in a superstar with the ego or superstar on some bullshit will fuck a whole team up. You know, so that's why I thought it was really strategic and important what you guys did, bringing two selfless two-way players to a team that already and we had a in. conversation with them like listen we're not confused about who we are right it's like yeah i was the leading scorer on this team the past two years i know who y'all are mm-hmm. now i'm gonna go back in my place and i'm gonna still star in my place right so we don't have no confusion about yeah. nothing that we doing yeah. you know and i think that's the beautiful thing about our team it, you don't you don't get that much from guys in the league either no. you know what i'm saying like just imagine what that, even though they the two stars, just imagine what that did for them. Right. You know what I'm saying? Coming in on a new team. It you welcomed, know, guys been needing to hear that. It welcome them. I mean, that's one of, the, one of the favorite thing I remember about Doc was be a star in your role, and you mentioned it. For so sure. I'm going to go back to my role, and I'm going to be a star. And there's a role for everybody. You know what for I mean? Sure. Obviously, your role changed slightly. I mean, you're still going to get your numbers, but you're just coming from, you the know. Mentality, though. Right. It's mindset. just the mentality. Like, mm-hmm. I know I got two guys that deserve the ball in, in scenarios that I think I should have it as well. Mm-hmm. You know, well, like a, last game. And that's a good problem to have. Well, listen, it's a good problem to have. Yeah. I come off a pick and roll, you can't help. You can't do mm-hmm. nothing. Yeah. I throw a clean chest pass to the man for the game. Yeah. You can't You could have easily mm-hmm. took your man one on one. Yeah, you can't mm-hmm. help. Yeah. So it's a good problem for us to have. Mm-hmm. Mentally, if we on the same page, the sky's the limit, dog. Yeah. So what do you what's your thought on this team? You guys haven't really even fully come together yet, but still you can tell even though I think you guys are fourth in the West, it's early. You see glimpses but of it. That's what I'm saying, flashes like, of it. Like, yeah, you see glimpses of it. Like, we played in Atlanta, like, we were sharp. And it was like, damn, okay. You kind of feel it. It's like scary fun. Like, yeah, you oh, kind of feel shit. it. And even when we have, like, rough games and we have we have some we have some, some mistakes, we feel like it's communication. It was like, what, what was you thinking on that? Oh, I was trying to. All right, cool. So now we ain't got to go through that no more. Mm-hmm, and so mm-hmm. even, when we, even when we have setbacks, we still build on it. Yeah, it's finding ways how to win. Yeah, for That's sure. part of it, though. Yeah. I know that from the outside looking in, PG and Kawhi are kind of quiet. Like, who are the, the vocal leaders on your guys' team? Um, I am and Pat, for sure. Okay. You know, but those guys, they talk. They, do they talk? Yeah, I think a lot of people got Kawhi messed up, man. He's a funny cat, nah, man. Nah, he's super you funny. You play with yeah, him, too, right? Funny. He's funny super as funny. hell. Good dude, man. And he, he talks way more than I thought he'd do, especially, <laughs> yeah. like, during games. Uh-huh. Yeah, he, yeah, he, sure. he want to win. but He want to win, yeah. To me, it's good, though, to have two point guards as your most vocal That's on like, your team. Like the quarterback. The court, I was just about to say that. And yeah. then not only... You and Pat, y'all just not the vocal leaders. Y'all a big part of that team. For mm-hmm. sure. So to have y'all being the head of the monster and to be the most vocal, big that's part a, of how the culture is. That's built. a big part, bro. You know what I mean? I think a lot of the young guys on our team they follow our lead. You know because of how we carry ourselves. So. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on? We came into the league at a different time. I mean, I played fourteen. You played fourteen. You're going in your fifteenth year. So you came back. You came in in the early two thousands where there was no such thing as low management. Like we touched on it. Like superstars practiced back then. Right. You know. Good players don't even practice, you know, these right. days. So what is your thought, especially surrounding Kawhi, because it's such a big deal with low management? What is your thought on I that? Don't, but see, I don't think he's the – he shouldn't be the case study. He's not the poster boy for post management. He shouldn't yeah. be the case. He, yeah. You know, if the man can't play, he can't play. Right. But if they throw low management on it, it'll be a problem. Right. But even on games that's not back-to-back, he can't play. Mm-hmm. So I don't think he's the poster child for it. I, as far as guys just not playing for the hell of not playing – 
I don't know about that. I'm a little old school. <clears throat> I don't know. I still play for the kid that never seen me play before. Right. You know, so if I can lace up, I'm going to lace up. Mm -hmm. um, and you know what else, man? The game is so different now because it's, it's so many good players, mm -hmm. so many good teams, mm -hmm. and everything has to be so strategic. You got the numbers involved in it now. You got the analytics. You yeah. got the sports scientists. You got all this shit in the game, and then it's like, why have all of these assets if you're not going to use them? So mm -hmm. it's it's kind of 50-50 with me. You know, if, if guys can play, I think they should play. But you're spending all this money on this science, man, and the science is telling you X, Y, and Z, right. you might as well use it. Mm -hmm. so. Tell me, what's your thoughts on one and done? Should that should that rule be eliminated? Should you be able to go straight out of high school? You, I mean, you coming straight the from high school. Players, the guys that's held this league up are from high school. You yeah. had a famous quote about – you know, who's kind of been the pillars of this league, and, and t talk to us about that. Yeah, KG, mm -hmm. Kobe, LeBron, these are the guys that carried this business mm -hmm. straight out of high school. You know what I mean? Like, so what a year? what is a year in college going to do? Because if you're going just for the year, you're not going for the education. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then you mm -hmm. take a look at Zion, he almost tore his knee. I almost the tore his shit year, up. The one year you know what I mean? And, and now you see the young kids, they going around it. They going to yeah. prep school. Yeah. They going to the overseas. Uh, going overseas. They doing all types of, they doing anything to not go to, I've never been a fan of the NCAA. Yeah, me neither. You know, my, my senior year in high school, I literally couldn't find a reason to go to college. So I didn't care where I was going to get drafted. I knew I wasn't going to nobody college, waking up at five in the morning yeah. and trying to figure out how I'm going to eat at lunchtime. Right. You know what I'm saying? I just that never was a that never was appealing to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm struggling are, to eat at home. Why the fuck I'm gonna go ten miles, ten hours on, away man. to go struggle up ten hours away? Fuck out of here! I'm struggling on, now, so nigga. I'm, I'm happy that they they're starting to put some kind of legislation in where uh, you know these kids have an opportunity to be able to to benefit off their own names and their likenesses. You right. know, you go to them fan stores, they selling the jersey without your name on it. You know, everybody's making money off of you, but you. You know what I'm Crazy. saying? It's, it's simple shit. It's like, all right, take the money out. I don't even know how I'm going to eat. Mm -hmm. Like, your coach can't go buy you a nice dinner? Right. That's ridiculous to me. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I think I think the rule is stupid to have it one and done. Um, you know, the, these, the best guys are going to find their way into the NBA anyways. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you might as well create a vehicle for them to realistically live their dreams and benefit you on the business side as well. What have been some of your favorite moments throughout your career on the court? Man, favorite moment. The ten six man of the year. The ten the ten trophies you got at home. Yeah, my first one was my favorite one. My my first. What year one, was that? Two thousand fourteen. Who was you with? I was with Toronto, and that one was special because I was I was playing in my hometown, Atlanta. Um, tore my ACL, and my head coach told me he like, I don't know if you'll be the same player again, and you know it's just not working here. So I'm mm. gonna find a home for you somewhere else, and then. You know, for them to kind of them to ship me to somewhere and win my first six man of the year and my my one and only season there that was special mm -hmm. to me and the group of guys that I did it with. Redemption. So you won. You won three. I've won three and I've been a runner up twice. So and I lost one to James Harden. That's mm -hmm. some bullshit. Right. Right. <laughs> right. So arguably, when you think about it, coming out of high school, did you ever think you would be in the talks of one of the greatest six men in the history of the game? No, I thought I was be a superstar. You know, don't we all think that? Yeah, but you but, but, but yo yo high school games was like some above the rim type shit. Yeah. Nah, and so I felt that way. Yeah, it's like I'm gonna be one of the best players in the league. Mm -hmm. You know, my route took me somewhere different, and so it took me a while to kind of embrace it. You know what I mean? Because we all strive to be the best player in the league. We all strive to be uh, one of the guys that's on on every commercial. Have your mm -hmm. own shoes and all of that. You know, like year six or seven, I realized that wasn't my role. Mm -hmm. You know, so I could either carry this chip on my shoulder and be upset, or I can carry this chip on my shoulder and say, I'm just going to make it embarrassing for y'all to have me coming off the bench. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I chose the latter. So. What is your thoughts on that, though? Like, if they say, Lou, what you want to do? You want to start or come off the bench? What would you say? At this point? Mm -hmm. I'm just, I am who I am at this point. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, Doc will start me every once in a mm -hmm. while and just, um, just to mix it up, but... I think it's just who I am now. You know what I mean? Just a six man. I mean, well, like we know, at the end of the day, it don't matter because you're going to yeah. play starters minutes. As long as I'm in in the fourth quarter. Yeah. That's yeah. the only the thing I'm really tripping That's on. That's what I, I tell people. You know, you don't start, you start. It's like, all that shit don't matter. Like, who is in at the last two or three minutes of the game is what's the only most thing important. it affects is the money. Mm -hmm. 
It mm-hmm. definitely affects that. That's what it affects. It, you know, because people are like, oh, you should be making this, you should be making that. Like, I, that's another reason why, I don't mean to cut you off, but that's another reason why I think the city appreciates you so much. You know what I'm saying? Because they know you could have went somewhere else and got more money. Right. You know, so everybody in the world know that the ants under this building know that. It wouldn't. I wouldn't have been happy though. Like right. the, the places that I had deals on the table, it just it wouldn't have been fulfilling to me. Right. And especially with everything that I had built with this particular group of guys. You know what I'm saying? So I took a little bit less than um, what I could have got, but it wouldn't. Have, the money wouldn't have did nothing for my happiness. Mm-hmm. You know, and especially where where I was in my life, my kids loving in L.A. Mm-hmm. I found a I found a home. You know what I mean? Like I said, I played in three teams in six months. Yeah. What that, what was I didn't want to move that, again. Yeah. Was that Lakers, Houston? And back to L.A. Back to L.A. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tell me what that was like because we've both been trading and bounced around. and Oof. that People don't understand, like, <clears throat> family-wise, life-wise, you just got to right. pick up and no matter what and move. Right. So tell me what that's like. And they can follow you and press child support on you in every state, too. <laughs> Let me say that. That's Lord. a different one. I ain't know that <laughs> Man, one. Man, <laughs> shit, I just, Oh, we talk about all kind of shit on here, bro. Uh, They'll follow you every state, try, try to tap you on the head. Let me get some of that. Never. Go ahead. Go ahead. Nah, that's because you, you know that's cause you're allergic coaster. to condoms. That's why. I was at one point. Yeah, you're allergic I was, to I was going point. rare put, a lot. You, need, you know. You need to put that, put it on your whole body. Just put that bitch all the yeah, way had, on top of you. I had to clip. It. I had to go on for your boy. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but it was uh, it was a roller coaster. I knew I was gonna get traded from the Lakers. I, I knew that was coming. Uh, I think the last game for All Star break, I checked out of the game and all the coaches stood up and was like, "Thanks for everything you did." And I was like, "Oh, I'm what?" <laughs> yeah, like Damn. I think, I think, you know, I was, I was like, "Oh, this is it." So who was coaching there? Luke, Luke Wall. Yeah. So I, you did, yeah, so don't I get, knew don't I get me on his ass. Yeah, yeah. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I knew that was coming, and so. Um, I was working out All Star Weekend in Atlanta, um, and got traded to Houston. And then um, Houston, I liked being there. Um, I thought we could have did something special. I wish they would have been a little bit more patient with with the process. Um, I was in China, got traded again, and so I was like, "Yeah, I don't know what the fuck is going on." You know what I'm saying? And then they trade me to the Clippers, and then they still had Jamal at the time, and so I was like. It don't make no sense. Yeah, it don't make like what are y'all trying to do? And then you know they start making some moves and um and like I said, I had that conversation with Doc, man. And every I think the whole course of my career changed after that. Mm-hmm. You know, I've had my best years here in LA. At looking back on my career, like I fuck with Doc. I just think when I was there, he had a lot of hats. So I want to say he was president, okay. GM, and he was head all of coach. This shit, yeah. You know what I mean? So there just wasn't really. There was too much kind of whispering and, and, and not truth coming to the surface, you know what I mean? But our particular incident was um, we had just lost to Golden State. Um, in Golden State, they beat our ass. And Blake and DJ didn't have the best games. But for some reason, just that day, he wanted to go at me in the film room. And I'm someone, you can coach me, you could yell at me, you could do whatever you want. You're just not going to res- disrespect me as a man. That's like where I draw, I don't give a fuck who you are. That's where I draw the line. So he got mad at like the two shots I took. I took two shots in the game. He like complained off both. Like I had a corner three that I shot that I should have passed to Blake when he was cutting down the middle. And then I had another three point that I should have gave to Jamal. I'm just looking at this dude like, motherfucker, I took two shots and we lost by 30. What the fuck are you talking about? (laughs) You know what I mean? So (laughs) it was just a situation that was kind of weird. And then he came at me for something. I'm just like, yo, man. Fuck this. So I like got up and everyone in the room's like, because <gasps> I remember DJ was sitting next to me. He like patted me on my leg like a little dog to keep me calm or something like that. Which is funny because DJ is a fucking maniac in film sessions. But, but, but he, <laughs> it, it came from us though, because you know DJ yeah. didn't used to be that way. Okay. So I got up and everyone's like, oh shit. And they're like, oh, chill, chill. So I walk, you know how the film room, I'm over in the corner and you got to walk past the coaches right. to get out. So I just, man, I was got up and it was just heated. So I walked out the room. And then I went in the back and like, fuck it, I'm just gonna go home. And I was just like, nah, I can't, I can't let my team down like that. So I saw on the TV that we were done with filming, they were out on the court stretching. So I went back out on the court, start stretching, mad as fuck, not saying nothing to nobody. And this mo- this motherfucker comes over me and tells me to flip my jersey over and he's gonna put Jamal with the starters and put me on the second team. So I look at him and I took my jersey off and I threw it. He's like, put your jersey back. I was like, these motherfuckers know what team I'm on. So I didn't have no jersey the whole practice. Went out hard, <laughs> killed in practice. And then uh, we played. 
I was on one. Even some of the, but see, but you know, I think Doc was on one too. Doc, he liked that shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he didn't like what it. he didn't like what almost happened to him. But um, <laughs> <laughs> so then went hard in practice. You know, some of the coach came up and talked to me. You know, so uh, you know it was this, this, and that, trying to defuse the situation. But you had coaches before, like that little exchange where you took your jersey off. They not doing shit until you leave uh -huh. because they can't accept that type of, like Doc. No, he Doc kinda, is a play, he's a player's coach. He, he edgy understand like that. it, right? Mm -hmm. Like because he's, he's like, a former on, player. Like you on edge, right. I'm on edge too. Right. Mm -hmm. You know he's what I'm saying? And so yeah, he gonna challenge you. Some yeah. coaches I've been with, they are gonna like, back down. Yeah. They gonna be like, oh, security, get yeah, him right. out. It's like you my coach. Like right. you call a security, bro. So any so I go home. We play four then early the next day, and I can't sleep the whole night. And I had stopped smoking too for a little bit. So oh, that night Lord. I started to chain smoking. Probably That's smoked like three or four joints that night. It's all bad. Mad as fuck. Couldn't sleep. Got to the gym early as fuck, started shooting. We went to shoot around. And before we brought, like right when we brought it in, and I just, you know, I, I just told Doc, I was like, you know, you can coach me, you can yell at me, you could do whatever, just don't disrespect me as a man. And then, you know, he said his part and it kind of started getting heated. And he's like, well, you think you're tough, huh? I was like, what? So like it, it got super, like he almost like was trying to poke me. Couldn't be me. So yeah. it, we, it chilled out, we went through shoot around and then we went in, back in the locker room to watch film at the shoot around. And uh, Mike Woodson tried to say something slick. And I was like, Mike, don't start, because you can get it too. You know what I mean? <laughs> so everyone calmed down. And then Doc said some more shit to me and then stormed off in his office. So I stormed after him in his office. And everyone like tried to pull me back. And we sat down, had a little conversation. But it was just a little heated back and forth. Looking back on it. You think you took. Right. Mm -hmm. Looking back, I mean, I fuck with Doc. You know what I mean? Like I said, I think I was going through a divorce at the time. So I was kind of on edge. He was going through whatever he was going through. So we was kind of on edge. And we talked obviously talked to and, and made amends, but like you said, he is someone that you can have that, you can go back at, and you got to respect that because like you said, a lot of coaches, you yell at, you cuss at, and that's it. Yeah, I went Even at, though that was it for me. I got traded. I was the first traded the motherfucker. <laughs> I went at Mike Jones, I went at and I, was and I got traded. traded real quick too, so I was be careful. for Lance Stevenson, and then we ended up on the same team that year, but you know, to to, to see what he's, he's done for you guys, like I said, I always loved him as a coach. I just thought, our differences was when he had a lot of different hats and, and, and there was a lot of rumbles in that locker room about you know him not being this and then his son coming in and all this other stunt crazy kind of stuff. So it was just a, a a feisty situation. But we had so much talent on that team, like, but we would always get in our own ways. So that's why I'm excited to see, like I said, I still love the Clippers. So I'm excited to see what you guys are doing now because I feel like you guys have just as much, if not more, uh, talent than Lob City had, obviously. But you guys have a real chance to win a championship, you know, and I think that's dope because it hasn't been done for that franchise. For sure. <coughs> yeah, I always wanted to know that. Yeah, well, it's, have yeah because y'all shit is documented, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And so I, I, when I've been around Doc, I'd be like, damn, that ain't that hasn't been my experience with him. Right. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I know you, I know how cool you are, but I know as a teammate, Mm -hmm. How feisty you are, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? How competitive you are. So I always just wanted to know, like, what, what was y'all disconnection? You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Because I like both of y'all. So, <laughs> tell me what it was like playing with the Lakers and, and getting a chance to play with Kobe on his way out. That was interesting. <laughs> Bean, he said, interesting. Shout out Bean. Oh, excuse me. Before we get in that Bean, I need that pack, that Kobe pack that just dropped. It was three different shoes. We talking about the, boxes again? Like MJ already man, took your give boxes. Give me my, give me my. This is my shoe segment. You gonna give chance, Kobe? Cole, it's a new pack, undefeated pack, that's what it's called. I need all them boys. 13 or 14, you need them? No, I'm good. You 13 or 14. Lord. What about MJ? He might not have heard you from last. We'll get back to MJ. Okay. It's about Kobe right now. <laughs> now, I think, um, <clears throat> I wish I could have played with Kobe, like, in his- Kobe, Kobe. And when, yeah, when he was Kobe. Like, mm -hmm. I felt like he could have did something special for my career. Um, Number eight, Kobe. Yeah, I'd take an early 24, too. Yeah, <laughs> 24 was still a killer. <laughs> eight was um, an animal, though. I don't. I just think it wasn't. It wasn't managed right. You know. I think we could have been a lot better than we were. It kind of just turned into like, like some Harlem Globe try to shit. Like, mm -hmm. you know, because it was like. At first, it didn't. It wasn't the. It wasn't the farewell tour. You know. And was it two it, season? Not to cut you out. Two season. One, one season. Okay. With him. The last now, one. Did I play two seasons with Cole? The last one. I did play two seasons. Yeah, I thought with it Cole. was two. Yeah, yeah. I did play two seasons with Cole. So, but the first one he was he was he was hurt the majority of the time. Um, the second one, uh, it turned into the farewell. See, it turned to the farewell tour, and then at the same time, it was like they were trying to develop the young guys. And I was like, realistically, you can't you can't do both. 
you know, you can't develop these young guys and then tell them that, like, that shit don't matter when the game starts. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it was just, it just, it wasn't managed, it wasn't managed great. But as far as, uh, as far as Cole go, man, he was super cool. Um, I enjoyed competing with him um, and just, just being around him. You know what I'm saying? It's just a different energy when you're around him and you on the flow with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I say, I mean, I got a chance to like you play with AI, play with Chris Paul. Super competitive dudes, but to me, there's no one more competitive. Yeah, see, Cole. I didn't, I, we didn't you was, get that. Yeah, we yeah. didn't get, we didn't, we didn't get that part of the experience. Like right. every once in a while, we, you we, would see we, flashes. We, yeah, did he would say some shit? Did it, the whole room was like, like we had a fuck. He gonna be mad at me for this, but look, we had a blowout. <laughs> <laughs> we got blew out at uh, at Portland, and he came in the locker room, and he was like, from now on out, every time down the court. I touched the ball. Y'all go learn what it's like to play with Kobe Bean fucking Bryant. <laughs> and I'm sitting there looking like, okay. oh, this motherfucking <laughs> serious. It's a dead ass serious. But, and so Nick Young playful ass. We go, we shower and shit, we come back. Nick walk in the locker room, tell us, huh, y'all better throw that motherfucker the ball or it's going to be some shit around here. <laughs> Straight so, up. Like Nick never took anything serious though. Yeah. But we had just got the shit kicked out of us and Kobe wasn't going for it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so I just think mentally like, he meant that shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? I just think at that point, his body just didn't give him what he wanted. It's yeah. a lot of miles, man. It's tough, you know, because I got Shaq the same way in Phoenix, you know, where I missed prime Shaq. So I got Shaq that was still cool, but he was just, he's on the other end of the spectrum. He was like a seven foot three, big ass kid, yeah. you know, pulling pranks. But I was just saying, like, you would see flashes every once in a while. I'm just like, God damn. Like this, that's man. crazy. Right. Like the last game, like the last game he played, he went for 60. 60. Yeah. Went for 60, like, literally, when motherfuckers say, I'm going to leave it all out on the floor, Yeah, that's what he did, bro. I believe it. Who are some of the best young players that you, that you look at in, in the league right now that you like? Shea Gilgis Alexander. You got game. Uh, that one hurt. You got real game. That I remember Doc hurt. was real hesitant on trading him, too. That one hurt when, it, when, when Shea left because you can just see him get better every day. You know what I'm saying? Like, you literally watch this kid grow day in and day out. I think he's gonna be real special, man. Um, ja Morant in Memphis. That motherfucker's cold. Yes, sir. Like he's one of the young kids. I like. I'm going NBA TV, like Memphis. Watching that. I'm watching that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I I really like. I really like them too, uh, for sure. <clears throat> Guys, not in the league right now, like Jamal Crawford, J.R. Smith, that we know can play. You know, Carmelo just got picked up. Like, what are your thoughts on situations like that? Uh, it's sticky, man, because it's like shit. It's going to be a funeral for us all one day. One day is over, right? You know what right? I'm saying? Yeah. And, and shit, we all going to feel like we still can play. Mm -hmm. I did. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> when you was done, did you, you felt like you could still go, right? I just had to go punish the big three. Yeah. <laughs> I had was to it, get was, it out some type of way. Was the Clippers the last team you played with when you came yeah. with us? Yeah. Yeah. And you got the short in the stick because I thought you should have definitely. What, what was the situation there? Um, Someone got hurt. I just started playing and uh, Chris Paul broke his hand and they needed to bring Another in more point, point guards. guards. That's yep. right. So yep. I think it. I think it just it gets sticky with that because, you know, you know that these guys are. You know that they season vets. You know they can give you something, but then it's like they've created all these avenues to develop young guys. Mm -hmm. It's a so young it's like, league now. Yeah, you know, it's like so. Do you do you give that opportunity to? A, to a vet that you know you can give some, or you can develop this kid and see what he can give to you. So it's it's so difficult, man. Yeah. You think you think they're confused though, like when they when when you walk in the locker room and they see you. You think they still think you about 21, 22 years old? <laughs> yeah. I think I think so, yeah, bro. Benjamin, Benjamin, Benjamin Button. Yeah, come on, he's the only one. How old are you? Fourteen years in with no grades. Thirty three. How many more years do you feel like you got or want to play? Good ones. Yeah. Like four. Oh, okay. And then I'm going to steal. <laughs> exactly. You're going to try to get Might 20 as well. years you, is, that, is that a goal? You, th you ever think about that? Um, Coming out of high school, yeah, 20 I, years I in the game. I can get 20. only thing that'll stop me if my kids tell me to stop. Mm -hmm. You know, my daughter's my daughter's an eight and five. I got a son on the way. Um, Congrats. Your daughter hooping. And she, my daughter hoop. And so I want to be there for her. I want to be there for her process. Um, my five-year-old daughter, she's into acting. Her personality will fill up a room. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I want to be there for you know, for their development. You know, I don't want them to be up and popping and then I come into the right. scene, you know. Right. You know what I mean? I, I I try to let my eight-year-old daughter just do her own thing in basketball and 
I leave her alone, and if she asks me something or she she wants some advice, I kind of poke my head in. Other than that, I just let them be kids. But I want to be there for right. You know, because you can't get that time back. You can't get it back, especially at a time so impressionable, man. Yeah. And so, only only reason I would stop if they tell me to stop. That mm-hmm. that was my thing too. I had just signed the year I won a championship with Golden State in 2017. I signed a three year deal earlier with Sacramento. But it was, it was crazy. As much as my boys love basketball and come to games, would come visit me in the Bay. Like one night we were sitting up watching TV and they're just like, Daddy, we miss when you used to take us to school. And that yeah. shit broke my whole heart. Nah, so you my daughter I mean? did that to me one time. Um, last year, I was packing my bag and she was cool as ever. She laying in my bed on her iPad. And she said, Daddy, can I ask you a question? I said, what's up? She said, uh, you don't get tired of leaving us? Mm. I was on my way out the door for a road trip, and that shit broke my heart. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, it fucked my whole day up because yeah. it's like, we kind of naive. Like, well, they ain't saying nothing. They ain't tripping. Right. Uh, like, that shit bothered them too. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And so when she when she put that on me, it was different. And then it was like a blessing in disguise. Like, the very next year, she turned into a basketball fan. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so um, because we had the uh, parental advisory on her TV, so the only thing that she could watch was like Nickelodeon, um, Disney, and NBA TV. Mm-hmm. And she was kind of growing out of the kid shit. And so she watched NBA TV and she like basically coached herself into being a fan of the game. Mm-hmm. And so that kind of re-energized what she saw me going through right. and, and everything like that. And so she kind of gave me a another boost instead of wanting me to come home. So yeah. we'll see how long that lasts. Tell me what it's like being a retester. What is it like being a father and, and you got your first boy on the way? Tell me what that's like, man. Lord, oh, Lord. I I'm can excited. Imagine. I feel like this go, This will be my like my first challenge as like a father. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Girls, you kind of you kind of give a lot of responsibility to the mom. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? With a boy, you want him to be just a, like you, a mirror image of yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, and you got to put you got to put that time in. So mm-hmm. I'm excited, man. You guys got a name picked out? Yeah, six. Six? Six. six really? Six man, yeah. <laughs> six That's man. dope. That's His dope. X, Y, X. That's dope. That's, yeah. That's so, dope. Take us back to Christmas Eve 2011. You're almost robbed at gunpoint. Yeah. Tell us about that story. Yeah, so I uh, I get my hair cut in the hood in Philly. Philly, it's grimy out. 22nd Indiana. Indiana. Just keep real. You do everything in the hood. You ain't never changed. You do yeah, everything yeah. in the hood. <laughs> it is what it is. So. And let me tell y'all, too. If you look on the map in on Atlanta, Georgia, you're going to see Lou Willville. Yeah, it's facts. a real thing. Facts. Yeah, facts. That's this a real, is a real that's thing. A real facts. Thing. Proud of my boy. But uh, I was in Philly, and I was actually with my man. And... Um, just full disclosure, since it's y'all. Mm-hmm. Of course, he was scrapped. Yeah, you know of course. Saying? Just At all times. protecting each other. And so uh, when I was done getting my hair cut, I was at the light. And I remember he called me. He said, yo, you good? I said, yeah, I'm going home. He said, all right, bet. And I watched him U-turn behind me and go the other way. He U-turned. I looked down at my phone at the light. And I just heard click, click, click. Somebody knock on my window. So I'm like, fuck. Look up. Bro got the gun on me. I don't know why, but I rolled the window down. That's just that's just where my mind took me. I rolled the window down. And he like, get out the car. And I said, huh? And when I said, huh, he looked at me. He said, Lou, I can't even do it to you, bro. I got too much love for you. Mm. And at that time, um, me and Meek, uh, me and Meek Mill, we was doing a lot of coat drives. We was doing a lot of stuff in the communities. Um, that particular community, you mm-hmm. know, we just we just had our, our footprint on it. Um, that's his neighborhood. Um, Philly had adopted me, and so whatever I was doing over there, he would get behind me. Whatever he was doing, I would get behind him. Mm-hmm. Nonetheless, we was doing a lot for that community at the time. And the dude said, he said, man, I can't even do it to you. He said, man, I just got out of jail. All I got is this gun and a bus token to get home, bro. I ain't got nothing to eat. And I just was thinking fast. I looked. I said, look, bro, it's a McDonald's right there. You meet me at the McDonald's. I'll buy you whatever you want to eat. He said, all right, cool. So my first thought was, do I let him get in my car? Mm -hmm. I was like, hell (laughs) no. So I just, I started driving first. Yeah. So I drove, went into the McDonald's, and I watched him 
running across the street to the McDonald's. So while he running to the McDonald's, I call my man, yeah, like, yo, pull back up. Pull back up. <laughs> I'm like, pull up to the McDonald's. Pull up to the McDonald's. So they they made the story like I sat down and ate with them on some, nah, hell nah. That motherfucker ordered food. I swiped my car. Yeah. I shook his hand. I said, God bless, bro, but this ain't the way. Yeah. And by that time, my man was walking in McDonald's. I got the fuck out of here. Yeah, mm. yeah. So yeah. that's the that's the real story. It yeah. ain't no, he got sat in the down car. Sat had a meal. Y'all we share some ketchup. Had, yeah. Nah, hell nah. It didn't go like that. Y'all you know? found each other on IG afterwards and shit. Nah, it didn't go like that. <laughs> nah, but that's, the, that's but, crazy. That's lucky. But, I mean, shout out to homie, whoever mm-hmm. he is. But that's, a, that, but that's a testament to who you are, though. Right. Like a buster would have got smoked and robbed right there. No, you know what I'm saying? The fact that you was in the community, the fact that they know you be around there, like that that says a lot about you, bro. Very few yeah. players could do that. Yep. Very few players. Because I was good. down bad. I'm keeping it real. Yeah. I'm scared shitless. Yeah. I ain't going to flex. Okay. Uh, so I I was uh, just in Atlanta at your uh, silent listening party to the new project. Yeah. Um, I'm one of those guys that dropped projects, you know, doing my career while I was playing. You one of the only one of the very few rappers that actually put their music out. Yeah. You know, talk about your new project and um and where you see yourself going with the music. I just have fun, you know, and I The underground goat. Yeah, for me, Shout I just want to be part of the conversation. I don't even want to be like an artist, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't even want to be like But you are, bro. I know that, but you having you you having full f- uh, silent listening parties like rappers have with with the DJs you That's have plenty for could, me. Like, like that makes me happy. I like. I just want my friends to be like that. Shit hard. It, but it, that's what I said. You see me and you see me in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is hard. But, um, um, shout out to Andrea, my manager, man. She just like, sis. Yeah. She's like, bro, you spend so much money on this shit and so much time on it. Like, either you gonna put it out or I'm gonna put it yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, it was supposed to come out already. Um, now we looking for. A, um, we probably put it out All Star Weekend. Um, I just wanted to feel a certain way. I wanted to look a certain way. Um, I had a documentary that was going to come out with it, mm-hmm. um, a movie. Uh, we ended up getting into some uh, where, the, where the documentary uh, is no longer. Um, we had merch to go with it. The merch is still going to come out. Um, I, had a, uh, I had a sample on the, uh, on the project. Mm-hmm. I didn't know I had a sample on it. Um, we was having a hard time getting that clear. Clear, you know, I know how that goes. Yeah, go. so everything had kind of just got backed up. So we're going to release it in February just to give us some more time to get organized. Like I said, I wanted to feel and look a certain way. I don't want it to be rushed. So how many, underground go. What number what pro, what number project is this? This will be number three. Number three? Yeah. You have any uh you ever thought about uh any NBA players you want to work with? Me and Damon actually had a conversation yeah. um about doing something. I sent him a record um to get on and he never sent it back and we never had another conversation about it. Mm-hmm. So I don't know where that stand but um Shump used to record at my house in my studio. Yeah. Yeah, we but we never did music together, but he always was <laughs> recording in my spot. Other than that, I don't really know. Yeah, I t- I, I talked to all y'all about doing music together before. I, you know I think how the ego shit yeah, is. Yeah, man. man. I, th- I think we need to you get together. You took me off though. a song too. I did not take you off a song. Ooh, you took me that's off the crazy. song. What song what I took happened? you off? The one you and KD did. Blame it on Lonely the at the top. I took you off that? I went crazy on that. You took me off that joint. I, I, it came out and I was like, that's crazy. That's, the, that's how you found I out? Actually, you I, I, found actually, out when it came I out. actually sent you that song to get on Lou. I sent it back. It was done. Mm. You told me it was fire and you took me off oh, the song. Oh, and he gassed you? And he told me, money over women I, is I the motto I, I follow. Living like full throttle. I'm turning up like a nozzle. Haters want to hate, but on Twitter they still follow. On my Instagram, like more pictures than models. You didn't curse either, I, huh? I did not curse. Yeah, I said it to you. Too? What I don't. I, 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 I'm, yeah, I don't remember. Hey, blame it, I don't on the, blame it on the weed, not his heart. Nah, no, no, no. <laughs> don't blame it on the weed and don't blame it on my heart either. I don't. I honestly don't remember. I honestly don't remember. But well, let's do another one. I remember. I remember the song yeah. because it, but this is why I don't remember you because Katie didn't. He didn't get behind the song. Oh, he didn't push it. No, he didn't. And he didn't get behind the song. And then. They made us make they make it made us do it clean. I actually don't remember you, you getting t- on the song. Listen, we did all of the, you probably got caught up in the KD shit and trying to get him to uh, do it. Cause I did it, I did it in like a day for you. That's crazy. Oh, that was a quick return too. That's huh? crazy. Yeah, so you probably honestly I, I get it though, because yeah, sometimes if, if somebody do something for me and I got a lot going on and it's quick, I I have to go through my files and be like, Oh, we did that. Cause already? I cause you know, you know how cause I didn't call you 
20 times about doing something. That's how I don't, that's how I don't remember yeah, that. I'm like, hey, you took me out the last song. I'm going to keep doing something. You took me out the last song. That's why you should be going straight to voice. I don't now, remember huh? that shit, man. That's crazy. No, I but I do think, I, I, shout out to Shump for doing the, um, the BET Cypher at the Hip Hop Awards. I think we should all do a Cypher. Man, I've been said that too. That's your idea. Make and, show, I was, make, and I told you I was with it. Make Showtime. I, uh, that was my idea? Out. That was your idea. You said we should do it. I said that I'm with you. Put it together. Well, there it is, BET. Look, the next cipher need to be me, Shump, Dame, Dame, Dame Lou, Lou, Marvin say, Bagley, you Marvin Bagley, Mar and Q6, hey, man, get Marvin well, Q6 head too. Up. Marvin went head up with Dame. They said Victor, yeah, all did. the people be singing. Get him on there. Who? Get him Victor, the I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. Nah, I can't let you just cool. pick like that, Vic. I he, they he say you really sing though. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm cool though. I can be cool. I can be cool. I can be cool though. Straight up. Who are some of the people you look up to in the music game right now? Who are some of your favorite artists? Uh, He's a dream chaser. Let me I don't hope y'all don't know that. He and Mimik ain't just friends now. Motherfucker got a chain. He's a dream chaser yeah, now. Family for real. I'm holler, I'm finna go holler at them when I leave here. Um, I'm on a chain. Shit. Yeah. I'm, this, <laughs> hey, just one, one thing about all the smoke, I'm gonna ask for some shit. Close mouth never <laughs> get fed. You got platform to do it. You know what I'm saying? Close mouth never get fed. Me, I done fucked with you a couple times. It's gonna get to the right channel. Yeah, you, somebody gonna hit. Yeah. Me, give my baby mama chain, one of them little ones. <laughs> <laughs> Make them earn the big one. <laughs> yeah, I like, uh, uh, Meek is one of my favorites because I know he's telling the truth. Um, Lil Wayne has always been my all time favorite. I think he gets slapped on because I think he went so hard in the early 2000s. Motherfuckers forget it's, about him now. He still go hard. I think yeah. the only thing that's messed up is just the business guy. It's different. The, the, He's still alive. Yeah, and you know that's what? what it is with Wayne. And there's so many, it's so many guys rapping right now. All of them are his kids. They all all of them. They so, all Lil. Something. You know, Lil something. Lil all of them got something. dreads. All of them got tattooed yeah. in the face. Lil bullshit. Yeah, all of all them on 20 kids. drugs. They don't want to listen to pops. They want to listen right. to their peers. Right. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And so, uh, Wayne, uh, Jay Z, obviously. Um, and God rest his soul, I had just started getting into Nip. Mm -hmm. um, so case. I listen to a lot of Nip nowadays, man. Wayne the go, though. Wayne the go, though. For sure. Mm -hmm. Who are your who, So the, those, that's your top five? Who's your top five? I throw Drake in there. Drake is Drake, hard. Too. Drake goes hard. So speaking of Drake, how'd you feel about him dropping Six Man and basically being about you and your life? At the time, it was cool. Uh, it was, At it the time, me, it was cool. It, it, gave me, <laughs> yeah, it gave me a soundtrack to everything I had going on. Yeah, right. yeah. So you, we drove prices up. Yeah, you know? you it's gonna cost you. You wanted me to come to your party, so I, I appreciate him for that. You know what I'm saying? And, Looking back, man, in, in 20 years, gonna he's going to be one of the, the greatest artists to ever, ever you've ever heard of, and he made a song about me. That's yeah, killer. no question. Little me. No you know question. what I'm saying? And so that's dope. Like what's, it, what's it like? I mean, because, you know, Meek dropped your name, and, and, and y'all are family, but dropped it. What, what, what's it like, though? Like I said, becoming a hooper, fucking with AI, fucking with, you know, a legend that, that you looked yeah. up to, and now people you look up into in a rap game, and they're rapping about you. Tell yeah, me exactly. Meek shot a video at your you crib, didn't he? The, yeah, House Party. Your house Party, one of his yeah. biggest songs. It, that song was about my house. It was about a party that he came to. I need to go <laughs> to one of them, because uh, I be having pool parties out here, but I heard you be having the pool parties in Atlanta that I need to come to. It's a different to. vibe I'm just going to get a hall pass. I'm going to tell my girl and the baby to like stay Like the last home. two years doing the Lou Will Day, yeah, right? Yeah, you know, Be you know, you know Beverly Hills and Hollywood, like, you know the it's, it's a little the, different in Atlanta. But see, you doing yeah. yours at your house. He's no, doing his hell at his no. I no, rented the house. Okay, but he's doing his at his own city. You're right. I'm okay, not mad. this is Lou Willville. This is no, doing. It's just the, I seen I seen an Instagram and I almost wanted to be like, oh, I shouldn't be. I'm too old no, to be watching it's just this. A, it's just a good time. Right. It's just a good time. It ain't no VIP sections, no nothing. It forces everybody to. Hang with everybody and have a good time. I'm there this time with 50 joints. You can't hide. You can't hide at my party. Yeah. No matter who you are, it's right. nowhere for you to hide. See you. Yeah, you I get jealous when I look at Instagram. Yeah, me and I Jack got to be at the net. We might do a live. I got invited. I just be busy. We're going to do a smoke. show from there. Yeah. All the smoke. I'm going to yeah, come over there. You go. That'll be awesome. <laughs> All the there smoke coming from Lou Willville this summer. Yeah, we already went commercial, so we go all the way over there. Man, listen. <laughs> Who do you see? Do you see anybody? I mean, I know you probably know this is probably more for the media, but do you see anyone coming for your six man title this year? This year? Yeah. Can't nobody take it but Trez. And that's still a win for me. Mm -hmm. Right. It's teammates. Yeah, that's a win for me. That's my brother. And so, you know, the crazy thing is like. They don't know how close y'all are, though. 
Yeah, people don't know that. Y'all was in Houston together, right? Yeah. And he wasn't, because I remember. He be in Atlanta or something. He was in Atlanta with me before that, before we were even teammates. Yeah. That's where our chemistry come from. Like, we, he play on my pro-am team. Okay. You know He's a I'm dog. Saying? I like him. Yeah, He's a he, motherfucking he played monster. On my, he played on my pro team, so I don't know if anybody even gets close um, except, except Trez. And, you know, I see D. Rose is doing his thing now, but I don't even know if that's something D. Rose even want. Right. I, I heard him start. say it last year, but I don't know if he's wired for, like, what that job entails. You know, right. this dude is a former MVP. Like, yeah, it's a different animal. Yeah, it's a different thing. It's only been so only you and Jamal Crawford have three – Six man, right? So when yeah. you win the next one, it's history in the making. I wouldn't mind having it. I wouldn't mind just to just I mean, to stand you can a little bit right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got the scoring title. I got three. Um, Jamal has three, but I wouldn't mind standing alone on it. You know what I mean? That'd be dope. Yeah. Tell us about your. Uh, you got your own shoe, man. Yeah, that's that's crazy. That's mind blowing to me. Um, I don't know if I'm the only one. I think I am. But a career bench player have his own shoe, that's like, that's groundbreaking. You know what I'm saying? And so, how many players drafted where you were drafted to have their own shoe? Well, I remember it was crazy. Was he came in with Monte? Mm -hmm. They was Mississippi rivals, Bullets. Right? Shout out, little bro, Monte. Kids, you know what I mean? Yeah. And and I think Monte obviously stepped on the stage before Lou, but then Lou came through and and lasted with the longevity. So. Mm -hmm. That's great. All second round picks yeah. and, and I'm glad I stuck around long enough to kind of smell my flowers and get appreciated from my peers and the people I've competed with and against in this game. You know, I think outside the money and the championships and everything, y'all know the biggest thing that we live for is that acceptance from the guys that you yeah, competed against. Your peers, yeah. Like he was he was that dude. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so for me to be in year fifteen, have my own shoe, come off the bench, be considered a uh, underground goat. You know, I don't even think a lot of people understand what I'm trying to get across when I say underground goat. Like mm. you know this. You, you know, know it's know. like you got UGK. Yeah. But like the goats respect them. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like Jay, Jay Z got them look, on his album. Jay Z look up to UGK. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you got LeBron's and you got KD's. KD has went publicly and said that he feel like I'm a Hall of Famer and I'm one of his favorite you players. You are a Hall of Famer, for sure. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? No and so, like, compliments like that is worth more than any amount of money could ever do for me, you know, to get get accepted from those kind of guys in this league that you compete against, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. so. Because the money don't always reflect that. It and, don't, res and the they don't reflect don't the respect reflect it, because right? some guys get the money you like. Still fuck? corny. I can't believe they, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Yeah. You, you hear that a lot. Mm -hmm. And then you got people that, you, you know, OGs like y'all that, Y'all go on Aaron, y'all defend my name. He yeah. should be making way more than yeah. mm -hmm. that. That mean more to me than anything. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And so to have my own shoe dog, like it's mind blowing to me. As current players, do you guys see people like me and Jack in the media going hard with you? Did you guys see that and hear that when we we're out here going hard for y'all? For sure. Sometimes I want to text him and tell him to chill. <laughs> <laughs> you going too hard. You have it. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> like, and when one time I hit Big Bro, I said, "Hey, you wrong on this one." Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I say, yo, you wrong on this one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But behind the scenes, it's like we hear y'all, we see y'all. It if it, it takes something as simple as just just like the video. Yeah. It stay out the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because we still under that machine. Right. You can't yeah. say. Right. You can't say exactly what do you so want to say yeah. sometimes. We out here. Well, we appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Even no if doubt. it's just a. Hit that like button just to let you know I'm right here. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But we see what, but, but what 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 they hate too. They hate the fact that we got the respect and the relationship where when we on TV that I can get a text from you. You know sure. what I'm saying? Yeah. They want the shit to blow up into something. You know what I'm saying? But the fact that the respect that then is all coming from a good place, they hate that type shit. Mm -hmm. And whoever gave my microphone some syrup before this uh, <laughs> it leans, show, it's been leaning in the hole. Why don't you just keep <laughs> dropping, bro? Y'all going to give me the Dauphine mic today, man. We need to get this finished, uh, fixed the next show, man. I'm too live for this shit. <laughs> Go ahead, man. Who is... Uh... In the league right now, who's the most slept on player you think? Or besides Shea, was starting to make him? Man, slept on? Like a young cat? Mm-hmm. Why don't you have to be young? Just you someone know, like man, you know going to war with, like that motherfucker don't get a lot of love, but he can go. Drew Holiday. Ooh. People sleep on Drew. Great pick. Drew Holiday, both ways. both ways, both ways, on both ends of the court, bro. Like I don't think he get he get the recognition and the respect that he deserves. Um, That's a great call. Yeah, Drew I like man. Drew Holiday. 
Drew, I hate seeing Drew come. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna front. He, he does it on both ends. And he know all my shit. We played together. He, like, <laughs> he, he on you. <laughs> who's, who, to you, who's the best player in the game right now? Right now, today, I think it's Kawhi. I think it's Kawhi with KD being out, and then it's Paul right there behind that. Mm -hmm. And that's not like a. And I, I'm, and I'm not saying LeBron because LeBron to me is like grandfathered in. <laughs> yeah, he OG, already OG know. status. Yeah, like it's like he's in conversation for the goat, not best it's like player. Comparing rappers to Jay Z. It's yeah, like he's he's grandfathered in. Yeah, so, you know, I, I that'd be my pitch. So you see, Kawhi, KD, and Paul all right in that mix, fighting for the best. Yeah, I think they still, they yes. Yeah. Who is the best? Who's your top three all time in the all game? All time. All time, Michael Jordan, LeBron, AI. AI is three. AI is three for me. I love that. That's my personal. Right. Mm -hmm. No, you def that's, that's why it's your list. Yeah. Penny Hardaway used to be in there too. Oh, he, he played. Was cold. Yeah. Well, he, played. Played. Yeah. he played. He, 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 he probably hate when I tell this story. <laughs> <laughs> Go tell so it. You know, yeah, I got to tell it. So, you know. Um, Look at, hold on, hold on. Look at my mic. Yeah, it's still leaning. We'll give it a Cialis. A double cup. Somebody gave him like a double cup, man. <laughs> Go ahead, Lou. Yeah, man. So, you know, I'm originally from Memphis, Tennessee. Um, and so as far as like basketball, like Penny Hardaway. Penny, come was, on, man. People like, forgot. I didn't how like Michael cold Jordan because was. of Penny Hardaway. Yeah. Like, he used to give Mike problems. Cause, yeah, because at that Real time problems. it was like, it's either Penny or Jordan. I'm like, well, it's Penny. So growing up, he was always my my goat. He was always my favorite. And um my senior year in high school. Um, Nike was kind of uh, was kind of coming for me a little bit because they knew I was going to the league, and so uh, they had set it up for the Nike rep to introduce me to Penny. He was playing with the Knicks at the time. They was about to play. They was playing the Hawks. So I'm excited the whole day in school. I'm like, I'm fucking finna meet Penny. Like, this is crazy to me. So the game go on or whatever. After the game, he come out. They walk me down to meet him. He got on a suit and shit. So uh, the Nike rep, he say, uh, he say, hey Penny, this is a young kid I was telling you about. He thinking about going to the NBA. His name Lou Williams. He from Memphis. Man, Penny shook my hand, didn't even acknowledge me, didn't even look at me, gave mm. me a no look dap, mm. gave me one of these, mm. and kept talking to who he was talking to. Never looked me in my eyes. Never said what's up. No, he's biting down. You're gonna dunk on your never ass one day. Nothing to me, and I was like, that shit crushed me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It did. We. Years later, we had a conversation about it because every time I was doing an interview, I was shitting on him. Like yeah. <laughs> every time I had something to say about him, so he, we sat out. He was just like, "Man, I apologize. He wasn't on purpose. This and that." I was like, at this point, I'm an adult, bro. Like, yeah, I like I ain't tripping. You know what I'm saying? And it ain't a big deal to me no more. I just ain't like, fucking with you how I used to. Yeah, exactly. You out of my list no more, nigga. Yeah, That's nah, why. yeah, you you out of my list now. Yeah. With retirement being around the corner, we hope you get another five, six years, but is there anything you look forward to post-career? Nah, man, I'm locked in the moment. Okay. I'm happy where I'm at. I'm happy, at, like, I'm at the height of my career, you know, so I'm in the moment right now. Mm -hmm. So only thing I can, I can really look forward to is fatherhood, you know what I'm saying, just being a better father than I am now. So. What would winning the championship mean to you? Everything. Icing think, on the cake. Yeah, that solidifies everything that I've worked for. You know, as far as where my career took me, I've done everything individually that I can do. Um, so the ring is the last thing for me. So. Ain't going up. platinum. Yeah, that'll work too. I take, <laughs> I take a plaque too. Yeah. Uh, I mean, winning the ring gonna help you go. Yeah, I'm about to say that ring gonna mm -hmm. take that. <laughs> I'm dropping that day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a, a deluxe. Well, Lou, man, we appreciate you, man. man Thanks for your time. Good luck the rest you, of the season. Bro, Stay healthy. You know, love you know. for life. Appreciate you. For sure. And that's a wrap, man. Episode five, All the Smoke, with arguably the greatest six man in NBA history. Future Hall of Famer. You already know, man. My Good little luck brother. The rest of the way. We need our shoes, man. We wear 14s. We need some, we need some uh, yeah, shoes. I'll knock one of you niggas I out for Lou. I been proactive, man. I, I would have brought, brought them with me. You in season. No, we, we, we'll get you later. That's but, right. We know where y'all at now. Yeah. We up the street. And, we and, have and, them and then remember, we're going to do a live show from the pool party. Done deal. It's on record. We on. Make sure you guys catch a Showtime Basketball YouTube or all platforms that stream podcasts. All of them.